passages off and on called the three sixteenths. We did one from Matthew, we did one from Luke, we did one from Mark, and now we're to the ultimate three sixteenth, John three sixteen. Do you all know that verse? I thought maybe you did. Everybody on planet Earth knows that verse. Uh, Tim Tebow, when he would play at a football game, wrote it right under his eyebrows because he knew the camera would focus in on that thing. I see cars going down the road because they all pass me because I drive under the speed limit. And written on the back of it, John 3, 16. Let's say it together. Are you ready? Here we go. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You checking your watches? Hmm. I got four quick things to say. You're going to like my preaching because I'm fast. I'm quick. Yes, okay. Fourth quick thing to say about John 3.16. Number one, God is love. Now the scholars say this. God is omniscient, all-knowing, omnipotent, all-powerful, omnipresent, everywhere at once. Yes, that's true. But the most important characteristic of God, he's love. God could chose me and think he wanted me. But he chose to be love. And it's a unique kind of love. There are a lot of Greek words. Uh, some people think there are only four. Uh-uh. There is a bunch of them to describe various kinds of love. You've read some of them. Eros, that's romantic love. Phile, brother love. Here's a word that we all know. We know one Greek word. We know this one. What is it? Agape. Agape. That describes God's kind of love. Here's what's special, unique about this love. It is freely given to everybody. It doesn't demand anything in return. You know, we do it like that. Now, if you'll do this, I'll love you. That's not what God is. First John chapter 4 says, Not that we love God, but He loved us and sent His, and sent His, sent His only Son to be the perpetuation for our sins. So John 3, 16, that we know by heart, teaches us this. God is love. Yes, he's the omnipotent creator who spoke the cosmos into existence. We talked a little bit about it in our Sunday school lesson this morning when he said, in the beginning, let there be, and there was. But the most important thing for me to remember is this. God is love. Here's point number two. I'm moving along, aren't I? Okay. <laughs> he loves you. He loves me. He said he so loved the world. Here's what you can do. You can take your pen, your Bible, and you can draw a line through the word world, and you can write your name right there. Who do we love? Is there a line? Have we drawn a line in the sand somewhere and people on the other side of that line, we don't love. They may have been cruel, mean, ugly to us, to our family. You want to get my wife stand her up? You talk about her children. She'll call you the task on it. There are some folks out there because of their attitudes, their actions, they're hard to love. Let me give you one. Putin. Anybody like the Russian dictator? I don't like him. As Jesus was being nailed to the cross, he gave us that agape love. As they're nailing him to the cross, you remember what he said? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I'll give you a list of folks. It's not complete, but as I list these folks, think about them. Are there any of them that you can't love? Uh, folks with different skin colors, white, black, brown, yellow, red skins. Any of them you can't love? Oh, how about uh, this? 
Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives, gays, straights, the liar, the gospeler, the backbiter, the cheater, the murderer, any of those who can't love. That's not an exhaustive list. God loves them all. I didn't say he was pleased with what they were doing or their actions. If they keep doing it, he's going to bring judgment on them. But he loves them. Jesus is very open about condemning sinners. But you know what they accused him of? And I was sharing with the children about Zacchaeus. Uh, the religious leaders always coming to the disciples and said, What's wrong with your master? He's over there eating and drinking with sinners. I had some folks get on my case because I went in the pool room. They had the best hot dogs in town. And besides, I was a sinner anyway, so I'd fit right in with the crowd. We're not God. And we have extreme difficulty with some people in loving them. Let me tell you what agape love is for us. It is wanting the very best for the other person. And what is the very best for the other person? That is for them to be in a right relationship with the Father God for them to be saved. That's how we exhibit agape love to those that we don't approve of or what they're saying, thinking, or doing. We want to be saved. I need to work on this. I don't know about y'all, but I need to work on this. Point, I'm running through this pretty fast. Point number three. God demonstrated that wrong. wrong. All over Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrated his own love for us, that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet sinners, he died for us. And then the, the verse in John 3, 16 made it plain that God loves us so much that he gave us a son. And on that cross, Jesus didn't just cover up our sins. He erased them. Hebrews 8, 12 says, I will forgive their wickedness and I will remember their sins against them no more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Jesus, totally sinless, went to the cross and took all of my sins and made a for them. So John 3.16 says this. We have absolute, total forgiveness available. Have you availed yourself of that forgiveness? Quickly, one last thing. Here's God's gift. He's eternal life. Eternal life. I got another funeral. Yep, starting all over. Got one Tuesday over in Hawkinsville. A deacon of a church I used to pastor over. This will be my third one in Hawkinsville for three awesome men out of that church. Friends and everything. I'm going to be able to say at his funeral meeting with the family this afternoon that he has eternal life. That's God's gift for us. Romans 6.23, Paul says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Oh, John 3.16, we know it by heart, don't we? Tells it all. God loves you. He gave his son for you. His gift of love is eternal life and forgiveness of sin. I'm rushing through this. Have you claimed his promise? He made it on the cross. It's available to you. I don't care who you are, where you've been, what you said, what you 